Hi Matrix and welcome to this finance video on variations to default formulae brought to you by the answer series. We'll begin by reminding ourselves of the important features of these formulae. Let's start by looking at the future value and present value annuity formulae, both of which appear on the formula sheet provided in exams. These two formulae are applicable when you have n equal regular payments made over n time periods where the first payment is made at t1 and the last at Tn. If we look specifically at the future value annuity, the final payment is made right at the end of the final time period and so doesn't have time to earn any interest. For the present value annuity, all payments, including the first one, have to be scaled back to time T0, the present time frame. Let's have a look now at some variations to these formulae. The first variation we are going to consider is when we start making payments immediately. In this situation, the first payment gets made at T0, the next at T1, etc. all the way up to Tn. The result of this is that there is one extra payment. In other words, there will be n plus 1 payments altogether. Let's have a look at how this change in scenario impacts both the future value and present value annuity formulae. For the future value annuity formula, as before, the final payment made at Tn will not have a chance to earn interest, and so it is possible to use the same future value annuity formula on the formula sheet, except for one variation, the number of payments. In other words, the only change to the default formula necessary is instead of n payments, it will need to be n plus 1 payments. As far as the present value annuity formula goes, if initially we were to ignore this very first payment made at T0 and first only consider all the other payments, then we could use the present value annuity formula for these payments exactly as it appears on the formula sheet. Now, to include the payment at T0, we need to be aware of the fact that this payment is in the same time frame as this P here, the present value, and so it simply needs to be added. Let's look at some examples now of how these variations can be applied. Worked example 1 says, Starting immediately, Tembi made a deposit of 10,000 Rand into an account earning interest at 8% per annum, compounded half yearly. Her plan is to make equivalent deposits at the end of each six-month period. Calculate the expected amount in Tembi's account at the end of five years. So here is our 8% per annum compounded half yearly into the calculator memory. And then we use the future value annuity formula, but read carefully on the number of payments. Tembi made a payment immediately and then at the end of each six month period until the end of five years. So 10 payments plus the immediate payment is 11 payments altogether. So the expected amount in Tembi's account at the end of five years is 134,863 rand and 51 cents. And now work to example two. Lucky won 75,000 rand and invested it in an account earning interest at a rate of 7,2% per annum compounded monthly. He decided to enjoy the winnings by withdrawing 25 equal monthly amounts starting immediately. Calculate the value of the withdrawals. Why don't you give this one a go on your own first before moving on to see the solution, which we will go through together. Let's have a look now at the solution together. So first, the 7,2% per annum compounded monthly into our calculator memory. And then we are given the present value of the investment. And because Lucky took his first withdrawal immediately, we consider the first withdrawal separately and the further 24 withdrawals we use in the standard present value annuity formula. Then to solve for x, we can take x out as a common factor and add 1 to this fraction, giving the number in the bracket. And finally, divide 75,000 by this number in the bracket and the answer for x which is the value of each of Lucky's withdrawals, is 3,220 rand and 28 cents. 
Another possible variation is when there are end payments, but they start immediately. In other words, there is a payment at T0, T1, T2, etc. up until Tn-1, but no payment at Tn. Let's think first about the impact on the future value annuity formula. The fact that the final payment was made at Tn-1 and that we are considering what is in the account at time Tn means that everything will have the chance to earn interest for one more time period. So looking at our formula, this part is the standard future value annuity formula for N payments, but that amount is going to earn interest for one more time period, so we have to have this compounding factor included. Now if we look at the impact on the present value annuity formula, similar to before, let's start by ignoring the payment made at T0, then the remaining payments, of which there are n-1, can fit into the present value annuity formula. Then the payment made immediately has to be catered for by adding it in to get the overall amount involved. Let's have a look now at worked example 3. A man makes deposits of 500 rand at the start of each month into an account earning interest at a rate of 8,4% per annum compounded monthly. Calculate the amount expected to have accumulated in the account at the end of six years. Give this example a try first before we move on to work through the solution. You can see how useful it is to use the memory for the interest rate here because it appears in three different places. Now if we look carefully at all the details in the question, this man makes deposits of 500 Rand at the beginning of each month for six years which means there will be 72 deposits and for the final month the whole amount will have a chance to earn one more month of interest. So this extra compounding has to take place, giving us an answer of 46,928 Rand and 8 cents. You may feel the need at this point to practice a few more of these examples where the questions require variations to the default formulae. As we come to the end of our video, just a reminder of the answer series Grade 12 Maths 2-in-1 Study Guide as a resource for further practice. Thank you for watching this video. It is in these variations where finance questions can feel quite tricky. Hopefully you've been able to get a sense of what to look out for in the information given in a question to give you clues on what to vary in a formula when necessary. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.